Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the bar graph. Remember, in statistics it's all about representing data so you can take a look at the graph and very quickly, almost in an instant, determine what is going on. So here we have 10 states listed where in 2004 we have the average teacher salary in each of those 10 states. If we put it in a bar graph like this, we can see the relative height and so even though the data is relatively close together, it's a lot easier to see that one has a higher salary than another compared to what it would look like if we used a pie graph. So bar graphs in that respect, especially when the data is close and there's a lot of data points, 10 in this case, a bar graph seems to make more sense to give you that relative height. However, when, it, when you look at these here, it's very difficult to see which one is higher than the other because they're actually that close together. So if you do it in a sequential order, where you put the greatest salary first and the smallest salary last, you could then have a much easier time of seeing right away what the differences are in the earnings for teachers in those 10 states, the way you have it lined up, and you can kind of see the relative differences by setting them side by side in descending order. Either way, it's a good representation. It's all about what you're trying to accomplish. So there may sometimes even be personal preferences that you might think that this is a better graph than this or this is a better graph than that. In the end, it all, it's all about the visual representation and how you represent the data. So here you can see that it does look different depending upon how you present it in a bar graph. But that's what we mean by a bar graph.